welcome to TSP Weekly. This is your tech startup podcast for Thursday, November the 19th, 2015. We are today once again in the uh, KW Rotary Dream Home. I hope that's what it's actually called. Absolutely. This is the yeah. 20th anniversary yep. of the Dream Home being built, and it's in Vista Hills this year in Waterloo. Wow, you know your stuff. I, I just knew it was a long, long drive. I read the sign on the way in. <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, we should mention for our regular listeners, in case you didn't uh, take note of it, uh, we didn't have an episode last week. We had a, a guest cancellation again, and in the past, we pride ourselves on being flexible in, in finding other guests, but uh, both Steve and I were busy with other things and just at the point where we felt like saying, screw it, we're going to take a week off. So we <laughs> so, pride ourselves on our non-flexibility <laughs> of last week. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and you know, I got to say, it was great to take a week off, but we are very happy to be back recording again. Um, we should do some introductions. My, my name is Darren Conley. I'm a local tech entrepreneur here in Kitchener-Waterloo. Uh, joining me as always is my co-host, uh, fellow tech entrepreneur Stephen Campbell, um, things going well these days, Stephen? Absolutely. Yeah. I'd like to congratulate uh, Patrick Valopi, right, with Grocera and uh, the Flying Hambly Brothers, right, uh, once again with Press a Bottle, right, um, for their uh, their tweeting and retweeting of the TSP Weekly podcast. Yeah. Uh, they were our um, dream home ticket award winners. Right. So uh, they and Elliot have been in touch and their tickets are probably well on their way to them. So good luck in winning the dream home. It's yeah. beautiful. We're sitting in the uh, in the living room right by the fireplace. Yeah, we could potentially be sitting in their, like Patrick or one of the Hambly Brothers living rooms right yeah. now. I'm going to say this is Luke's chair right now. Sure. <laughs> sure, it's decorated for I'm Christmas, claiming it for Luke. actually. I think there are, I count two Christmas trees in here and there's another one out in the hallway. So uh, it's well christmas well, Christmas. <laughs> I was just telling our guest today, who we'll introduce in a second, yeah. this is my first Christmas uh, sort of decoration experience of the season. Right. Me, me too. So it's official now. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't even thought about Christmas yet because it's not really Christmassy yet. But uh, So who is enough. our Christmas guest? Yeah. Let's introduce our guest today. Joining us is uh, Mr. David Quenville. Did I pronounce that right? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. From uh, FH Match. How are you doing today, David? Not too bad. Not too bad. Excited to be here. It's a yes. nice home. So yeah. It's always good to sit in the living room up. Yeah. Those guests. So. Of the yeah, potential that's Patrick's future couch. Winners. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My lady, I'm saying so. Yeah. Yeah. We took a little uh, impromptu tour before we started recording. I've I've seen the place a couple times, but David had never seen it, and uh, uh, I think we were we were all impressed with that uh, clothes presser slash dryer warming cupboard thing wine cellar yeah. looking type of instrument yeah yeah it it's got yeah. like a touch panel on the front and a, whatever you need done to your clothes apart from washing them apparently it can do to them so absolutely yeah we should cool. see if we can get it on the podcast it sounds very techy <laughs> yeah i don't know if it can talk we'll have to go play <laughs> just with sit it there and push buttons <laughs> that's right um so uh we're today we're talking about fh match and um david Tell us, what is FH Match? I had never heard of you guys until uh, we decided to have you in the podcast. So, sure. Yeah. yeah, so we're a relatively new company. Uh, right. We've been in R&D for probably the last year and a half or so, a little bit more than that. Okay. Uh, FH Match stands for Fitness Health Match. Mm -hmm. So it's a social networking platform focused on professionals in fitness, health, and wellness mm -hmm. and to drive consumer traffic to them directly on one central platform so they can interact. So all what all that means is basically the evolution of word of mouth. Right. So... You know, when you look at FH Match and what we're doing, it's it's more of a portfolio management site in a sense as well as a marketing tool. So when you're looking at it, professionals can put videos, photos, their accreditations, their schedules, all that stuff online, their social links and website to be found by consumers. We're highly optimized. That's one of the key factors to drive value day one to the professionals. Okay. And then consumers can browse the site without signing up. There's no blocks. It's, it's all about open access and engagement for the consumer. For cool. the professionals, it's all about showcasing themselves. Maybe it's events coming up, their, their accreditations, their skill sets, the area in which they practice, non-mobile, mobile. All that information is there in a nice, clean, portfolio-type look and feel. Mm -hmm. And it's very accessible by consumers to message them, to chat with them directly if, if the professional wants that ability. It's, yep. Yeah, so it's, it's a very open, accessible uh, platform. So when, when you say for health professionals or fitness professionals, you, yeah. I'm thinking like personal trainers or, sure. or is there, are there other types of professionals like beyond Like a massage them as well? therapist or a <laughs> tennis coach, tennis professional or Absolutely. golf yeah. professional? Or? It, 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 that's the thing with it. It's, it's so pliable to pretty well any professional fitness, health, and wellness. But we're focusing on maybe five key groups at this stage. We're getting a lot of different types of individuals organically coming to the website, which mm -hmm. is great. Yeah. We have like uh, uh, vegans that 
go in homes and prepare meals for people. But for the most part, our target thing is really focusing on the fitness, health, and professionals, chiropractors, massage therapists, nutritionists, uh, personal trainers, health coaches, those types of individuals. Okay. Uh, but health centers is a big target for us as well. So we're really staying in the five groups. Uh, outside of that, though, what comes from the organic side, some of these people that may be uh, – a vegan chef that does it on the side may also be a personal trainer or nutritionist right. that coaches people. So there's a lot of synergies. So on, on this site, a professional can put five uh, skill sets or specialties. We tag them in, in, in that website and people can search and look for them. Okay. We also push it back out to Google so that they're highly optimized as well. So is it kind of like a LinkedIn for fitness and health professionals? Is that accurate? or It's more like or, a Patreon, I think. Is it? <laughs> well, is it? Well, I wonder. You don't support them, but it's... Um, it's a discovery, right? It's the marketing of the professionals and the um, gathering of the clients. Yeah, you know, it's almost like a conduit, right? But if you looked at LinkedIn as an example, they're an excellent CV site or a resume site. Sure. We're kind of, we basically rebuilt it in the sense that there's a lot more functionality. It's a lot more robust. We're not charging commissions or anything like that. We wanted to keep it really open and accessible and, and have a high adoption rate. Right. So it's linked in with a ton of photos and a ton of videos and, and unlimited messaging and follows and you can create managed lists. If you're familiar with stock investing, you can create managed portfolios of investments of companies and watch them. You can yeah. do the same thing on this site. So we kind of took the, the bad and ugly from other sites and we, we cleared that out with making it a more, uh, we kind of adopting it within our own website so that people can kind of benefit from all this robustness so that they can be a direct marketing channel to consumers where it doesn't really exist today. Okay. So you have both the, the fitness professionals who are creating profiles for lack of a better word on sure. the site right as well as um potential customers of those professionals that are coming to the site looking for those people and ways to connect with them yes absolutely yeah. but you can go a step further and say you know they can be scheduled they can be booked online uh you can really watch and create a watch list of all your professionals so so there's value for the consumer there's a big articling and blogging section we try to keep it clean, stayed away from the Yelp model, but really, really clean website. So when you go there, you always know why you're there. And there's an engaging aspect with the articles. There's some educational ones as well as, uh, you know, some fun articles on fitness, health, and wellness in different fields. So we try to mix it up a bit. So bring me through a, a sort of a user experience. If I go to your website and I'm looking for a massage therapist, uh, what do I experience? What do I find? So when you go to the website, you'll land on the website, and if you were to look specifically for a professional like a massage therapist, you can search in the top bar. So you're a consumer, you come in, you want to look for that professional. You would come in and you would search for that individual by specialty. You can search by name as well. There's a big general searching tab uh, where you can search by company name, individual, a bunch of different things. Mm. So if you knew the individual that you're looking for, you can search by their name. If you we're unaware of the individual, you can just search by massage therapist or a specialty of a massage therapist, stone therapy or whatever. Mm -hmm. A bunch of therapists will show up and they're all GPS enabled attached to your location. If you don't like the location in which you're at, say you're going to be going to Chicago and you want the massage therapist there, you can put in the city and, okay. and, and it'll find the same list on a GPS map and then you pick the you can view, compare, and then pick the one you like the best and start messaging them. So uh, do you find like you have a lot of like mobile users that you can typically grab their location from or is there a lot of – like I would do this from my desktop and I don't know how easy it is to grab a location from a desktop computer. <laughs> yeah, the, the beautiful thing about the website and, and we're not big in, uh, in belief of apps. We'll bring the value that we need to bring value today, but it's mobile enabled. Right. So on your phone, on your iPad, what have you, you can really search and, and find these individuals anyhow. Okay. So right now, based on the metrics that we see, most people are using some type of mobile device, right. uh, mo mostly iOS for the most part, and then Android would be second place. Blackberry's listed, though, which is a good oh, thing. We're it? in Kitchener, so I figured I'd mention that. <laughs> oh, you're backwards compatible. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, so we got some metrics around Blackberry, so we're all good. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, an yeah. avalanche of people running to their yeah. Blackberries right now. To, <laughs> pick up That's up. right. And then if I'm a professional and I want to mm. sign up and make use of your services, then uh, what's the process for that? Uh, so it, yeah. it's a pretty, it's, it, it's, it's very open and easy to use. So as a professional, you can come in and set up a profile. Yep. Everything's done on the spot. So they would set up their profile, put in their information, and whatever information they want to share. The profiles are designed in such a way that it's really up to the professionals to showcase themselves in a certain light. It's right. a template form that's really clean, so everyone's going to look the same with respect to the formatting. But where you can differentiate yourselves is your skill sets, your accreditations. By putting more information, You'll show up in a lot more spots because there is a general search tab that everything that's entered in that site is going to get pushed out. Mm. So if they're putting more information in, those a lot of those words are tagged. 
and on those tags they'll show up a lot more times in the search results so it's important that they put all that information there gotcha yeah. it's such an interesting yeah. sort of um uh, dichotomy between um petting the chicken on the head and yeah. finding more <laughs> eggs right like the customers <laughs> on the uh, that's yeah, I've never like, heard the chicken and egg analogy expressed in those terms. Just quite terms, that way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I find I like out this it. is my second chance at trying it. So, um, <laughs> Fair enough. What, uh, yeah. You have to focus on getting the professionals, uh, not that they're chickens, right. uh, but they're alive. And then you have to nurture the customers um, yeah. well, as well, right? Well, and also, like we just talked about the monetization side. So it's the professionals who are the paying users, right? Right. That's right. Yeah. Just, just to be clear. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There's professionals yeah. being two different parts. One, you're either a business or a corporate professional. Yeah. Like a health center is an example or a gym. Yeah. Uh, some type of facility. Uh, maybe you're a spa, what, you know, one of those people, uh, one of those groups. One of those and then, spa people. One of yeah. those spa I like people. Spa people. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and then the individuals, right? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then you have the individuals. So the individual professionals. And if they choose to pay, they can. And, and then they upload all their information. So you can so, still upload it without paying. And, and what's the difference between using a, a free version of the account or using a paid version of the account? Like what extra functions do I get if I'm a professional willing to pay to the, use your The platform? verbiage is the light to the premium. Oh, yeah. premium, premium, right. right. So <laughs> that's a great question. So on the marketing side, it's the same. So a paying yep. professional or non-paying professional, we still have to give them value so it's useful for them. Yeah. In other words, they're not going to sign up and put their information there and take the time to do it. Yeah. So uh, it's still a direct marketing channel for both sides, paying or non-paying. They're mm -hmm. still going to be optimized. You're still going to push out all to their links. So that's all good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the big difference would be from a professional paying member, if someone goes to book you, you have to be a premium member. Right. So if you're not a premium member, you're gonna you're still gonna be seen the same way as a non-paying member, but a consumer is gonna try to book you. You're gonna be alerted with those. So there's an alert mechanism on, okay. on the back end. They'll send alerts. You'll accept the alert. You'll come in. You'll upgrade. You'll take that appointment hopefully, right? Uh, and then confirm back to the client. And is there is there like a scheduling system, or it ties in with my Google Calendar, or it can you can export yeah. the calendar. Uh, okay. There's a scheduling system right on the website, so I can see your schedule. Uh, if you already have a schedule, you can uh, export it. If if you don't have a schedule, it's really good for you, especially yeah. being a new entrepreneur. Ones that are using some type of software uh, can can export it into that software as well. So okay, how often sense. do you like what what is the the pain point for you dealing with the professionals? Is it um, getting them to produce a quality video, or is it integrating with the current system they have for appointment booking, or yeah, what's the what's the biggest challenge you have with like Boy, I yeah. wish all these uh, health professionals could just be better yeah. at social media or do you see any yeah. consistent? Because that's a good question. Like yeah, the, you're is. always competing with the existing system, right? Right. Like what yeah. it, the professionals are already using something to market right. themselves. Whether it's pen and paper and to or book or things. Yeah. <laughs> a so, professional booking appointment <laughs> service, you know. That's right. So uh, that's a, those are great questions because one of the things that we, we can't create behavior or change behavior yeah. and, and we, we know that. So, but we wanted to keep that access there and that ability for them to adopt a new system. So it, it's there. It, it's more gravy on the top. The biggest thing is them being found. Right. You know, so it's for everyone that wants to be found. So if they want to utilize these different tools that are there, it's, it's free. It's part of the package. Uh, then, then, then great for them uh, and, and I'm sure they'll use it uh, the ones that you know want to stick to pen and paper or, or uh, deal with what they're currently doing they might not want to use our calendar whatsoever sure so they can put that a status report please don't book me on here call my office right. I mean it, it's it's that robust that it, it's really up to the user to start adapting to it and, and the functionality is great if they don't use it then, then it, it's there anyhow for the sure. ones that will so and what makes you guys better than a Google search which is probably how most people are finding these kind of professionals at the moment, right? <laughs> I, I think, yeah, absolutely. I, I think the frustration part on Google is actually finding the right professionals that you're looking for. Right. You can punch in chiropractor and, and massage therapist show up, or you'll find these people, and then you have to go into their individual websites and check them out. And some have more information than others. Uh, ninety nine point nine percent of them aren't optimized in the first place, so you don't know what you're going to get on your search. Right. Uh, and there's no way to compare them. So Google's a great tool to find things, but it has everything. So it's a really yeah. Big messy place to look sometimes. Mm -hmm. Ours is not messy. It's very clean. It's dedicated to fitness, health, and wellness professionals, and we control the tag words in there. So when someone's searching for us, well, searching for an individual, they will get their massage therapist. They're not going to get Home Depot, right? Uh, you know, so or, or other storefronts that maybe are more uh, have more domain authority than a personal trainer that just started yesterday versus a personal trainer that's the only game in town. Right. So it, it's it's that 
optimization that's going to kind of help them within the website because it's so critically central on a platform for, in a community-based approach versus an everything approach. I actually yeah. did a, a Google search for a healthcare professional now that I think about it recently. Yeah. And uh, I found somebody. I was looking for a sensory deprivation tank in Kitchener Waterloo. Um, <laughs> really? And I found one, but it took me forever, and I can't find it again. It was on a uh, Google search, and I'm not yeah. savvy enough to do a favorite Google search, or I don't know yeah. how to find my history Google searches or anything like that. Sure. So, but it was just a little spa where he had yeah. one tank, and I wanted to do a float and see what it was like to have all the lights shut off. <laughs> and uh, but uh, I couldn't find him again. So that that would be a place where that makes sense. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Do you have a category for sensory deprivation professionals? Uh, I, I'm, <laughs> not, I'm not sure. I, I don't think so yet, but I'd have to double check. But, uh, Very nice. Uh, check out that feature. You're going to have a rush of uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> non sensing professionals for it now. That's right. <laughs> to sign up. Um, oh, yeah. Now, I know when I'm looking for these types of professionals, uh, you know, a health coach, a personal trainer, uh, a fitness expert, yeah. um, I'm far more likely to go with somebody that's been referred to me by a friend sure. or, um, or, or another professional that I trust. My my financial advisor recommended my lawyer, and that's why I went with that lawyer, right? right so yeah. um, is there some way that your platform can manage the referral process, like the word-of-mouth referral process? Uh, absolutely. Like we're, we're trying to play the role of the evolution of word-of-mouth. So when you're coming in and you're looking at these professionals, uh, you're still going to get those referrals, and they're going to still be dependent on those uh, referrals. Yeah. But at least this way, you can go in and get a sense of feel of who they are. Uh, right. Where you can't really necessarily get that today. It depends on their online presence, if they have one. If they do have one, how robust is that? Is it a static website with a picture up and, you know, I'm good at these four things? This allows them to still have that ability. We're still linking to that. We're, we're not, we think it's important that we push the links to their website and their existing social channels like LinkedIn or Twitter or, or Instagram or whatever sources they're using. Yeah. But more importantly, they can really enhance their existing profile and build right. it up the way they would like. So however they want to appear, it's all, it's all there and it's more touch points for the consumer. Sure. My, uh, my last massage, which was years ago, uh -huh. um, we were in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida right. um, at a big fancy hotel, my wife and I. And just before we, you know, we were in the robes and the slippers and stuff. And just before the massage therapist uh, started, um, she says to me, um, I've massaged Mick Jagger. And I, <laughs> it was the weirdest thing that's ever, I was like, I don't care. That's no, don't, please don't put that wrinkly bag of yeah. bones in my mind that, that your hands were massaging him. Like how long ago did you wash yeah. your hands? Like it was, it was a weird referral kind of a thing for sure. me, right? Like I don't. Did you ask for a comparison after that? Just What's to that? see how you rated compared to McGregor? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, she said fleshier. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I don't know why we're talking so much about massages, but I just, why not? When you, just when you mention it, like I haven't had many massages in my time, but the ones I've had have been in very strange places, and I mean locations like around the world, back. not parts of my body. <laughs> so I had I had a massage on a cruise ship somewhere off of the you know the southern coast of Florida. Right, that was one. I had a massage in uh, uh, Turkey in a like uh, traditional Turkish Turkish bath, mm -hmm. yeah, like bathhouse where they use like these big sacks full of soap suds in the process. It's really it's really weird unless you've done it yourself. It's very strange to, <laughs> to do. It. And the other place was in Qatar. I had I won a door prize at some event that was a free massage at a super fancy hotel. And I'm like, do I do I like get like full naked here? Like, do I leave? <laughs> I was in shorts. I'm like, do I leave my shorts on? Like, I bet that was, was very exfoliating. They just use sand like, and. I, well, I felt like I needed some sort of briefing beforehand. Like, so it's your first massage in or it's whatever. Like, here's, here's what you can expect. Here's how you should do it. Because I didn't want to cut, like, have the guy come in and be like, this guy obviously has taken off too much clothing or not enough, and I would look stupid. Dave, this is the yeah. opportunity to throw out a massage story if you have one. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, I don't have a good one. So. Not no, one you can share. Right. I understand. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Now, this Secrets. is then now your opportunity to go out and have a good excuse to get more massages so you Absolutely. can get a good mas massage story. Yes, just Absolutely. off the coast of Florida, I recommend. <laughs> They're not that's often right. called massages, but it's fun. Uh, if they want to put keep your underwear on in the profile, they can do that. So that I right. think yeah. that would be yeah. very yeah. helpful to say the truth. Absolutely. Manage expectations. Expectations. Well, on that note, we're going to take a, a brief pause here, throw in our sponsor spot, and uh, we are sponsored by Igloo Software, and we're very grateful for their support. So uh, give this a quick listen, and we'll uh, be back in a, in a minute here. 
actually left Igloo for a while and came back because you get the sense of family, the sense of working as a team. It's a really inspiring place to work. People can be who they are when they're in the building and, and we're all working together for a common goal. It gets a little crazy at times. I have a very, very large collection of rubber ducks. My first day, out of nowhere, I just got shot by so many Nerf guns. I mean, we get beer every other Friday. There's nothing wrong with that. You could be here for a few weeks, but if you have a great idea and we think it, you know, it'll work, we'll run with it. Where you can go forward and pursue your own dreams. They are empowered to do their job. Our culture is all about teams. It's really great and it's something that you kind of strive for in a company. If you have a great idea, we're going to implement it. That's why people love working here. Did you get that? Igloo's always hiring smart, talented people, so if you're one of them, check them out. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so just to remind everybody, in case you forgot during that 30 seconds we were away, we are here with uh, Mr. David Quenville. Can Quen you say it with a French accent? Quen I, I can try. My nose is a little stuffed up. Quenville? Quenville. Quenville in French, Quenville in English, yes. All right. <laughs> I'll just stick with Quenville because my uh, French is apparently horrible. Yes. Um, <laughs> we... <laughs> Dave is joining us from FH Match, and uh, we've been talking about uh, fitness and health professionals and how they can use your platform. Um, I wanted to ask, we didn't talk about this at all, the name. Where, where did the name come from? <laughs> yeah, that, that was... Uh... That was fitness man, health? oh man! It was Am yeah, right? it was fitness health FH match, right? Oh, how about that? I guess about the first that, track. That yeah. name evolved. It was a bunch of different <laughs> names before, so we have a ton of different names we worked from. We actually really? had 150 names. Holy uh, wow! In the first about three weeks, and then it took us two months to get down to fitness health match, and then it was too long. Right. So you know who wants to you know have that on their email address to begin with? Never mind trying to say all the time. So. Yeah. Uh, we started looking at FH Match, and uh, we kind of came up with FH Match, thinking that the branding would look a lot better, and then eventually we'll just go down to FH. Sure. Yeah. Sounds awesome. What What were the? Can you tell us any of the early uh, front runners for names before FH Match came to the forefront? Oh, we had some really funny ones. Uh, we had Squiggles. Uh, we had. <laughs> they were trying to do a play on words, so mixing fitness and health, and then what does that mean, and then looking at an Guelph. animal. Fell? <laughs> Guelph. Yeah. You get Guelph. <laughs> okay, you could, yeah. yeah. We had Frick. We had all Frick. kinds of weird... <laughs> Have you been weird... to this Frick and <laughs> <laughs> So we had all it's kinds really of healthy. weird names. So we bought all the domains. We have 152 different domains on wow. every name we thought we were going to go with. So, wow. You know, that's inexperience, right? You just, oh, this is a great name. I love it. And then you wake up the next day and you go, oh, my God, what, what was I thinking? But you bought the domains anyway. So, sure. Yeah. So we, we, we went through that exercise and ended up with FH Match, which was one of our first names. Oh, okay. So it was okay. kind of a big circle of maybe one Maybe one of those other domains you bought somebody else will want and you hey, can hopefully. reclaim the money you purchased on the other 149 through yeah. that sale. Variable revenue, right? Yeah. You can't go wrong. <laughs> the yeah. URL that's doesn't right. taste very good, but it's really good for you. <laughs> yeah, sure. that's right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, so how did FH Match get started then? Yeah, you we, keep saying us. Uh, yeah. So who's us? Yeah. yeah. So I who's say the there's a couple of founders in, in the organization. So when we started, and I don't know if you want me to run to the genesis of the idea, but uh, there was we, a couple of yeah, founders. Yeah, please. Okay. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So when when we came into play, we were actually we were all doing our executive MBA together, and we were put into a classroom. And uh, the entrepreneur class, and he said, you know, go back, here's 20 minutes, form an idea, come back and then pitch it to 50 executives and see if they like it. It's wow. nothing like the 20 minute, come up with a, <laughs> a, an idea. So they can cooker. embarrass you in front of those yeah. 50 people, they just pound on you, right? So we That's came up right. with a bunch of different ideas. This idea surfaced, and uh, I surfaced this idea, and then I shut it down. We actually didn't proceed with it because I just, from that moment, forward I, I i just knew there was something here and it, it the genesis is, is really from personal trainers yeah. and the difficulty in finding them and their difficulty to find clients even the hardcore trainers to the the good life ones so sure uh that have a big brand to draw traffic for them the ones that don't have that big brand but have a good network so it, it kind of started there and then it went to massage therapy nutritionists and other types of therapists sure. and chiropractors so uh, and sensory we, deprivation tanks. Yeah, absolutely, but that's Soon, the one I missed. I missed that one. <laughs> <laughs> but there was there must have been some like personal aspect for you for your brain to go right to that to that yeah. market, right? Like, do you yourself a have a, your do you have a personal trainer? Or you do you have a membership at a health club? Like, no. They, they, I, I guess the thought pattern was really you know trying to figure it out before the apple hit the head. You know, for lack oh, of a okay. better kind of. 
uh, thing, but it, it's uh, when we were looking. For, I, have, I have two small girls, sure. so my wife's always looking for recreational sports for two small girls. Well, they're they were one and two; they're a year apart, which is crazy, but yeah. we've done it. Sure. And uh, and when they're three and four, a lot of these things don't take four uh, three year olds. Mm. So we'd have to wait for word of mouth, and we were, we were unaware of half of the programs out there. And that was the right. biggest thing. So that was a huge gap. And then when we find out, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is perfect. This is what we were looking for. Yeah. And and it took us three months to hear about it because some friend of her friend actually went to this thing and said it was great and they take three year olds. So right. and, and and then the personal trainer thing was clicked on from there. Mm. And I thought this is a huge problem. And yeah. and I'm sure I'm not the only parent that has these issues. So recreational sports went to a logical spot of personal trainers. Sure. It was built off the personal training format. And then I started looking at other areas. So I started speaking to a lot of associations, colleges, schools, programs determine what their gaps were, how are you servicing your members, what are what are they screaming about, what are their pain points, what are your pain points to provide that service for them. And then it was kind of brought it all together and I thought, oh my God, we have something here. Yeah. And, you know, fast forward a year and a half, two years later, and we basically rebuilt LinkedIn with the focus of fitness, health, and wellness professionals in mind yeah. and consumer access. So it's who, like, the, uh, it's oh, like the Uber for push-ups. Kind of. I yeah. guess. So, <laughs> so who else? Who else is with you then? Uh, did you mention yeah. their names? I don't, so I, don't I haven't mentioned much. any names. So yeah. right now we have a, an active day-to-day operations. There's myself. Yeah. Uh, there's another fellow by the name of Adam Marifi. He's a co-founder. Okay. Uh, and then we have a content manager. Her name is Melissa Williams. Mm. Uh, and they're great. So we have a strong team. Some of the stuff we've outsourced to trusted third parties that are here, Canadian-based, sure. that we have relationships with, and uh, we're doing. A, a lot of our social content or optimization through some of these people sure. as well as uh, development in Canada at this stage. Okay. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, you said you spent about a year and a half in the development process yeah. and only yeah. just recently launched uh, with your soft launch. So um, what what was it like going through that year and a half development process? I mean, you, did you outsource most of that coding work or were you guys hands-on for that part or how did that work? We were, we were very hands-on, but the problem when you're too hands-on coming from the business side is that is scope creep. It, it was yeah. horrible. This our MVP ended up being LinkedIn, which is crazy. It, right. We should have, you know, going back, maybe that MVP should have been a little bit smaller and then kind of bled it out in the market. Right. We're happy with it now. We're glad we went through the pain, but you know, we sacrificed uh, time to market. Right. in the process so but we're here now it's still the unique offer it's still very open and it's still the best thing out there yeah. it's not an app it's not a singular focus it's not regionally patched it's global and it's mass market appeal so uh, you know we're still we're still okay but it would have been nice to bring it a little bit sooner to the marketplace so that was one of the mistakes do you have any sure. competitors out there or anybody nipping at your heels or anybody you see developing in the same sort of sphere a bit or yeah I, that you I, could either crush or take on or <laughs> I, I, I would I would say probably uh, for the most part there, it's such a new marketplace it, it's such an obvious idea and the best ones usually are after the fact so when yeah. we're looking at the marketplace we see a lot of apps and a lot of people are new to the marketplace within the last year and a half there's there's people that have been there with regional apps for the last couple of years just sitting there I'm a personal trainer app as an example but it's really coming from the professional perspective where consumers aren't at that level where they're going to adopt the booking online schedule at this stage eventually the trend is there Mm -hmm. uh, but the access and the central place for communicating isn't there. Right. So there are competitors, but they're more professional focus of, hey, I'm going to build this app. I'm going to take a cut of your commission, and you're going to join my app. That's right. not the approach we've taken at all. We've stayed away from that completely. I want to keep it free, open, and accessible because that's that's not behavior changing. That's just trending, and, and c consumers and professionals need and right. want this. So the, there is a competitive landscape out there, but I'd say direct on what we're doing uh, I've seen hints of it from a company in the U.S. Uh, there's some mild hints, but they're more, you know, catering to the kind of higher echelon, hardcore trainers and chiropractors. Sure. And, and they're taking a cut of their money. I, I, I don't. I, that that's not us. We're no. more about the community than sure. than about the. Individual. We touched briefly on earlier um, some some of your metrics that you said were sure. showing some of your success. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure, due to technical difficulties, if we have that <laughs> part. Do you want to touch on that again? The metrics you've seen early and uh, yeah, the success I, you guys are seeing. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So we we've been really pleasantly surprised with the metrics. Uh, we're popping in more than 30 different countries. We have yeah. users that are using us. I'd say out of the 4,500, that number grows about 200 uh, a day. Wow. And you know, 
60% of them are new and 40% of them are, are existing or, or, or return visitors. Wow. So two or more times out of the 4,500 users, 3,500 of them currently as of data uh, last week, 3,500, 3, 3,200 of them are uh, been there two or more times and they spend eight to nine minutes on average on the website. So either wow. they're reading the, the content, the articles, or they're they're actually using the, the site, which is fantastic. So sure. we're happy with that. Yeah. And and we want to get some more of the story, but before I forget, I wanted to also ask you: um, Is there a way for you to like even with those the so the people who are visiting the site are kind of visiting it for free, and yeah. the people who are not using the premium accounts are obviously not paying for that service. But is there a way for you as a company to extract value um, from them as well? Are there are there ads up on the site or or you know, some other way of kind of monetizing um, aspects of the platform that way? Yeah, there's there's four different areas that we can monetize it. The biggest thing for us is we didn't want to junk up the website. Sure. We wanted to keep it clean looking. I, people always had to know why they're there and everything had to be one click away. So as soon as you put ads and everything else, you start blocking that. Sure. We have a content section on the landing page, which has 12 tiles. So on those tiles are articles right. where we're going to utilize three of them for advertisers for a unique advertising space. Okay. And one of them will be an events tab because we go to a lot of trade shows. Sure. So one of those will be utilized out of the three for trade shows that we're going with a either an affiliate of ours or a, a new trade show where we're trying to develop relationships there. Sure. Inside the website, there's tons of articles. We probably have over 50 different articles. We generate one every day and we release it to the market and then it goes in this portal. Okay. That could also be used for advertising as well. Okay. Uh, again, we didn't want to take, uh, you know, a model where it was junked up. So when you look at this section, you see 12 articles. One will be an advertisement or an event. And we're going to be very selective on what goes there because we mm -hmm. want to keep the website clean and professional and slick. So Sure. In the development time, did you do any... Um, user testing to get feedback on the friction that uh, people would experience? Absolutely. And it, I, I think that's a, a must do. We spent six months in private beta. Uh, mm. So that private wow. beta, it, it, you know, some people said it, it's long. Others stay in private beta forever. And we just didn't want to end up being vaporware at the end of the day. Sure. So, so, you know, the big thing was we had to get user testing. We needed to have that private beta because there's so many different moving parts in this website with all this functionality robustness is great, but are people actually going to use it? Sure. So it had to be seamless. It all had to be tied together and it had to be logical and intuitive and then clean, not junky where, you, you know, on Facebook is great, but like, I don't know how to use half the settings and change things. Sure. We didn't want that issue. So we stayed away from it. We kept it very clean and simple. Yeah. Even from an admin panel perspective on a profile, they can really control their privacy settings and, and do what they need to do to, to stay focused on the areas that they're promoting their their skill sets too so Absolutely. that was that was huge for us yeah um i wanted to ask as well uh so you it's how long ago did we start this process you said an hour oh, uh, a year and a half an hour and a half <laughs> yeah yeah that's right took 90 minutes or so but yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right yeah. Yeah, a year and a half ish. Yeah, yeah, I would say more than a year more, and a half. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm not great at math, but it's it, yeah. we started in April of 2014. So okay, yeah. So you know, yeah, yeah, yeah a little, a little more than a year and a half. Fair enough. Yeah. Um. And um, where? How did you guys kind of? How, how should I say this? Do you do you have day jobs? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the challenge. How, how how are you how are you financing this? Are there outside investors? Like how yeah. are you keeping the the cogs turning? Yeah, and, yeah. And good good question. So you know, for the most part, we all have day jobs. Sure. Uh, we spend a lot of our time on this job. I, you know, I I probably put about fifty hours a week into FH Match. Right. Uh, and my partners do the same. And then we have an employee. And then we have we have to outsource some key functions that we probably could have done, but right. we stay close and we monitor it closely. Yeah. So that was one way to get around it. We're bootstrapping the whole thing. Okay. Uh, and we've been bootstrapping the whole thing from day one. Uh, we had options to take investment money early on. Uh, we kind of chose to go against that. Mm. Uh, we wanted to get some traction. We wanted our baby to crawl before sure. we started looking at that. We're in the talks now, and we've been going through that process of talking to investors now. Sure. And just recently, when I say now, I mean really in the last two weeks. We were just in Ireland at the Web Summit. Oh. It was a huge event, tons of media, tons of investors. Yeah. And I get uh, emails from Patty Cosgrove all the time. Absolutely. <laughs> he just friended me on uh, on uh, LinkedIn on, uh, FB. So. Oh, did he? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. So I'm his personal nice. friend now. So. Sweet. That's nice. huge. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. So so that's We're gonna good. get him on the podcast. <laughs> sure, sure, why not? Yeah. yeah, but it was cool. I mean, awesome event. I, I, I talk about validation from a global market. It's you know we were talking yeah. to I don't know how many different investors, probably about forty different investors. Uh, yeah. Four to five of them asked us to pitch to them. 
which wow. was huge. The acceptance of it and, and the I get it, it was huge. We had one guy said, you know, can we white label this in, in a particular country in Europe? Yeah. And we're in discussions with them to white label the whole thing in one country. So, you know, give exclusive rights and change the skins and all that stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. what white labeling is. Yeah, yeah. pretty well. Right. You know, they, we, they take our website, we build their website, we put their face on it, take our face off and make mm -hmm. it exclusive to them yeah. for it, that region. It, it looks so, like it's their website, but it's really your website. Rebranded, yeah. yeah. reskinned. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. that's right. Powered by the three penguins, which we call ourselves. So. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. It's a little tag. See, I, th I like the yeah. three penguins better than F. H match. Really? I, I think it's dyslexia. I want to do F M eight. Like yeah. I get caught in the yeah. the, the letters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but true. the three penguins, I like. Yeah. I like a lot. Three penguins I don't care is what actually one of our domains that we own because we were yeah. going to go with that name. Oh. You, you'll see a pivot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. You, we, we, you never know. <laughs> right? We'll see what the. I love our logo though. It's our logo is uh, fantastic. So oh, it's a, it, cool. if you look at it, people really don't guess what it is but I, we got a lot of compliments on it okay. yeah, it is a really neat logo yeah. Yeah. although i would like to be on the creative team that did the three penguins logo i'm not sure what that would look like would you actually have three penguins i don't know we, fighting or something we know someone who might want to sell you the domain if you have your <laughs> three penguins idea that you I want need two to, more uh, penguins then i yeah. guess that's true there you go. that's yeah. true yeah. Yeah. buy some tuxedos um <laughs> <laughs> or just black and white paint yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Um, well, that's very cool. The international traction and yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, the buy-in that you got going on. Um, when we were talking about competitors, I was going to mention, we had a previous guest on the podcast. So yeah. I don't even know if they would be considered a competitor or a yeah. complimentary, but uh, one set. Okay. Um, have you heard of these guys? One set I uh, haven't heard velocity? of. Velocity, yeah. Okay, so they're in the Ten Velocity set Garage. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, these guys, one set, they do like um, – I don't know if you've heard of like Vine or Instagram videos, like very short form videos, right? Yeah. I think one set's videos are 15 seconds long, but they're all fitness based yeah. uh, videos where if you are a, like a trainer um, or a fitness professional, you can record yourself do, or, or even just a, a guy who likes to work out. You can record yourself doing different exercises yeah. and then tag them by like muscle group or whatever. Right? So oh, I want to yeah. see stuff to work on my biceps. Yeah. I can go and see like a, a whole playlist of 15 second videos with bicep exercises or. Yeah, that'd know, be complimentary actually. Like it wouldn't be yeah. com competitive at all. I, I think that'd be complimentary. Uh, okay. There you go. You know, it could be like a. You know, they put it on our website if they want to utilize that service in their profile settings because our profile settings are pretty grand. There's there's lots of good stuff there. Sure. Uh, but we have to be selected again. We don't want to put everybody in there. There's a lot of options with some uh, partnerships with respect to what value can they bring to our members. And that's all we care about is what value. Yeah. And, and is it something they would use? And I could see that like, definitely being something they would well, want to use. Well, even something so. like embedding videos from their service into the profile pages on your site, right? If, if sure. you have trainers that want to show off some of their uh, techniques or whatever. And right? they had like, got, they had yeah. like 30,000 followers on Instagram or Pinterest. I'm not sure which. But it was, in, in like three months or something. It was a massive fantastic. growth. And it was all organic because they were sharing it amongst yeah. themselves. So they yeah. didn't have to keep pushing the, the, the card and, at all. And my takeaway from that was the fitness industry um, – stuff gets shared very quickly yeah, yeah. <laughs> and because it's not like uh it's not like you're competing with you know another guy for doing you know the bench press or something like yeah. everybody's always looking to improve through whatever means possible and to find a better technique or to see right. like just because i'm learning from this guy doesn't mean i can't learn from that guy too right absolutely and uh and i think you know it, it's a good sign for your own kind of market that you're dealing with because uh you know, I don't have to just kind of work with this professional or that professional. I can I can learn a lot from a lot of different people Absolutely. and get involved with them, right? So it's a yeah. huge asset. Like even on the social links, when you look at Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, a lot of people bypass LinkedIn. Yeah, it's such a huge community. If, if and, and we focus on LinkedIn. Yeah, I it's driving most of our traffic. When we look at Instagram, we have a ton of followers in a short period of time, which we were surprised a lot better than LinkedIn and a lot better than Twitter. Yeah. But actually from directing traffic to our website, even though LinkedIn is probably from, from an eyeballs view of, you know, how many followers do these guys have? It's not a ton, yeah. but they represent thousands of visits every month. Wow. And, and it's growing by 30 to 40%. It's, it's unbelievable yeah. from LinkedIn yet. The, the social network in which they interact on LinkedIn is not really, you, you, it's hard to see that value where on Instagram you have this big, 
you know, they love your photos, they, they check things out, they repost them, but yeah. it's You'll not never translating see a dollar from into, them. <laughs> never. So, well, you, you yeah. know, it's, yeah. a, I don't want to say it's the vanity uh, thing, but yeah. it, it, it a little bit is. And, and does that translate to bring them to our website where they see our value and say, hey, this is good for me and I want this? Yeah. I would say Instagram so far hasn't proven that, but we're going to stay on Instagram. We're going to keep utilizing it. It's well, fun. And you know, the other thing that's great with social media marketing is in the fitness industry is you yeah. can, you can show like hot people yeah. with, with great bodies yeah. and those kind of images or videos get clicked on a lot more yeah. compared to if I'm running, you know, a platform for, you know, education or something, you know, you can't just, I guess you could put a hot teachers or something maybe, but like, yeah. like somebody in a, in a, doing yoga, a yoga pose is a lot more likely to get more clicks than, um, than what you get in a lot of other industries. So you can yeah, kind we'll of capitalize Dave, on that. Dave will take a picture of you in a yoga pose. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that, that would get a lot of clicks. That will get a lot of clicks. It will get a lot of clicks. No, I don't well. think it will. <laughs> I think it will do very well. Yeah, a click or is a click. Maybe yeah. for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't know. That's right. <laughs> it's, it, it matters all how you utilize it, right? And, and yeah. you want to keep that tone and message, but you have to switch it up between platforms, and then you're at risk. Like we yeah. had a bunch of dominatrix that liked our profile, and you know, you're liking them back, <laughs> and you're thinking, well, wait a second. You know, if someone's looking for recreation, sports for you know their youth it, <laughs> yes. might, it might not translate well it might not so, give the right yes. idea that's true. so you don't want to offend a market at the same time you don't want to be too acceptance of everything because our our, our model is really about engaging yeah. the consumers of all walks of life and sure. the professionals of all walks of life but you know and, and bringing them together so without yes. creating an opinion on you, either one you don't want to be scandalous you want yeah. to be professional but well, uh, equestrian yeah. riding with a not suitable for work warning on it is, is fine right yeah. Yeah. fair enough and we don't want to be a craigslist right we don't want <laughs> that true. So yes. we, we want to stay away from that model. Uh, Craigslist sure. is huge, but it could have been a lot more yeah. involved and, and, and more community driven. It would have probably done ten times what LinkedIn done, uh, sure. has done, but they chose the, the other path. Right? Really yeah, cool. sure. No, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, listen, I think it's about time for that special part of the podcast that we call the uh, <laughs> lightning round. <laughs> it's thunder, I, but it's. Did you see the lightning? I, I did. I did. You see it before you hear the sound. Yeah. Yeah. The lack of food I had is stars in there, but yeah. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. So um, we're just going to ask you a bunch of questions. Um, maybe some of them will be related to your podcast or podcast to your uh, product. <laughs> maybe some of them won't, but um, we'll throw them at you and see how you do. Do sure. you want to start us off, Stephen? Yes, uh, I've been dying to know, uh, and so is everybody. How many push-ups can you do? <laughs> I can do quite a bit. I probably can do like straight through, not yeah, stopping. Yeah, I'm just not like stopping. you go down, you do push ups till you can't do any more push ups. Yeah. I could do 100 for sure. 100 Get push-ups. out. 100 for sure. Really? Without yeah. stopping? Without stopping. So I do 50 about... per set. So you do I, sets I do sets of 50. Do sets of 50. I could easily do 100. Really? With arm burn and then collapsing. Absolutely. See, I, I think I can That's do. a really disappointing number. <laughs> <laughs> I can do in the range of 40, and I thought That's I was pretty, pretty good. good. That is But like good. 100, man, that's yeah. like. That's like I've been in the army for a few years <laughs> and like I've been maintaining myself. Wow. It's core strength, right? It's, so I, yeah. I do it every workout. So I, it just it keeps the core strength up. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. That's a great testament to you. Like, I guess kind of dog fooding your platform. Or less, <laughs> right? right? Like you got to stay fit to promote nope. the fitness platform. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my question for you is what thought makes you jump out of bed in the morning? Uh, my thought from a negative perspective, security, uh, security. <laughs> what are my website? girls doing right now? <laughs> What's happening? Yeah. It's a website okay. crashing. Did okay. they break something downstairs? I hear something. So yeah. <laughs> I, but, uh, you know, what wakes me up is, is this company. It's, okay. uh, yeah, I just, I just, I'm just in love with the idea. I think it's a great thing and I'm just all over it. It's yeah. Just, yeah it's, it consumes me probably too much. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, as an entrepreneur, um, you're, you're adept at um, identifying pain points and then creating solutions around them. Um, do you have another pain point that you've identified in your life that you thought, man, if I had double me or more hours in the day, I'd tackle that one too? What's another thing that somebody else can come along and if an entrepreneur is listening to this and they have an... What's your idea? What's your next idea? Well, my idea is totally unrelated to this. And yeah. it's an idea that I, I was actually going to start before FH Match kind of came into the picture sure. uh, and forced its way into my mind. But it's... Uh, Penguin migration? <laughs> so, 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 something like that. With skidoo suits and the snow boots. Uh, but uh, very, very different about IT and operations. Uh, all the big banks get attention from all the big players. And, and for mid-market 
customers and clients, small banks, small shops, they have to go to the big box solutions or IBM, spend a ton of money, a ton of dollars. And there's a market there because I do that for a day job. Oh, okay. And uh, I mean, if someone could come with a servicing arrangement, outsourcing, but maybe near shore to Halifax or something like that, yeah. and go and meet these companies and manage their services and IT for them, they'd make a fortune. It's a lot of heavy lifting. The market's there. 100% you would make money doing it. Yeah. Uh, and that's where I would go. If I, if I wasn't doing this, that's exactly what I'd be doing. Interesting. Yeah. Really neat. Interesting. Yeah. Darren? I'll have to consider that as a possibility. <laughs> it's not very exciting or endeavors. sexy, but, I've, you know. It, I've got like 30 other things, and I'm not qualified to actually do that anyway, <laughs> so I, I won't. Um, <laughs> my question is, <clears throat> what is one startup skill that you feel that you have mastered at this point? I, I, I would say uh, adaptability to failure. I mean, a lot of things that we want to do you have to have a quick solution on the back end so yeah you know it, not assuming everything's going to fail but always having an ability not just a contingency plan but the ability to kind of adapt change and move yeah. uh, without getting caught up on something so i would say you're forced to do that and if you don't do that well you'll fail and fail again yeah and i i think there's nothing wrong with failing but you have to adapt change move and go with your best guess sometimes and be confident that that's the direction unless something else tells you it's wrong. Sure. Get connected, get balanced. That's right. That's you know, right. I would argue <laughs> that adaptability is actually probably the number one skill that people need in the modern world going forward, right? Because modern. things, especially technology changes so fast. If yeah. you don't adapt to keep yeah. up with things, you get left behind, right? Yeah. So that's, can't fall there's, in love there's my two cents. Yeah. And you can't fall in love too much with your own mechanisms yeah. because you'll find that you're on the outside looking in. I, I think that's the bigger thing. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of my favorite quotes from a book. I think it was a Piers Anthony novel back in the day. Yeah. Master gamesmen adapt. Okay, yeah. Yeah. That's true. I've it's had true. that in my mind I, for years. I like that. You you made me think too of the, um, if you ever read the Ender's Game. Mm -hmm. um, Piers and Anthony Scott uh, or uh, Michael Michael Scott. No, Michael Scott. Scott. Michael Scott yeah. was the guy from the Office TV show, <laughs> the character from the Office. Number one boss. Um, I can't remember the name. Uh, Orson Welles guy. Scott. It's gonna come back to my head. Uh, it's gonna come back to me when I'm not recording the podcast. But, uh, but Ender's Game, like that whole the movie was crap, but the whole book is about this child who's really good at uh, analyzing what's going on and then adapting strategies um, in order to, you know to defeat the enemy or overcome the yeah. obstacle or whatever it is. Absolutely. Right? And that's what the startup world is all about too. So yeah, absolutely. So speaking absolutely. of adapting, yeah. um, what do you think your number one obstacle to growth is moving forward currently? I, I would say, I think we have a good strong, well, I, not good. I, we have a very strong digital and social strategy. Uh, it, it's a good engine because it, it helps you determine if, what you're doing. Is it working? Is it not working? Sometimes you can flick the switch too quick because it's been such a short period of time so we have to be patient with that as well to make sure we're not shutting something off that's that that is working uh i i think we have to keep a handle on that so that we always are in front of the clients like a lot of bigger companies or companies that get funding sometimes they step away from the client and they keep on building the things that made sense a year and a half ago uh i i think that's always a challenge that you have to be involved. So a lot of these trade shows, on the ground marketing, being in front of your consumers and hearing and actually listening to what they're saying, because it might make a lot of sense to you. You've explained it 4,000 times. It makes even more sense to you now. And, it, and then you have these professionals that are saying, well, actually, that doesn't make sense for me anymore. Or mm. it's changed. So I, I think that listening key is easy to say, but hard to do. So uh, the biggest challenge will be going to these events continually and still run a company and do all these things as we're growing. And I think that will probably be our biggest challenge. So, mm. And I'm already feeling it now. It just, you spread so thin, right? Mm -hmm. But you yeah. have to stay in front of the clients or you'll lose sight of the future. So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my question for you is, what is one of your hidden talents? I can juggle three balls. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. nice. That's very true. Keeps glancing at the Christmas trees and making me very nervous. <laughs> yeah. We're guests here today, Dave. But yeah, yeah. How, how did you come to develop the, the juggling skill? You thought one day I'd like to learn how to juggle and then off you did it. Yeah, yeah, it was actually, it was in school, it was in university, and I had a friend that could juggle four balls, and he was uh -huh. a roommate, and he was kind of a quirky guy, but didn't, we ended up becoming very, very good friends. And, okay. Uh, he said, there's nothing better than juggling, and I didn't really know what he meant, and then until... You know, one day, girlfriend broke up with me. Life was a mess. And, and you're I, like, I'm going to learn how to juggle, juggle damn it. <laughs> I'm going to juggle. That's and quite I, an epiphany. I juggled my way through life, you know. Like, so it's, and, and life is a juggle. So, sure. you know, there's a lot of uh, things you can draw on. But, yeah, juggling. Yeah. Just, uh, just to sit down and 
think about nothing but those three balls, right? So, so yeah. I'm I'm a three baller, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's going to be a three baller. How, how, when are we adding the fourth ball? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, that I, can't, is, I can't do it. That's He's got other right? stuff going on, man. <laughs> I, I understand all the theory behind You're not even three a three baller? Balls, right? It's like every time one is... You're throwing a ball out of the hand that's about to catch the one that's landing, right? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're basically just doing that over and over. I, I just have a complete lack of coordination. To yeah, pull you it can't off. juggle in your head. You got to get out of there. In man. my head, I'm an amazing juggler. <laughs> I, I can visualize juggling perfectly. But anyway, so here's yeah. a here's a more of a, an artsy question for sure. you. Um, we're coming up on Christmas ish colder yeah. weather, although the last week has been beautiful. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So we're going to a, a Caribbean island. Oh. Um, and unfortunately, you're stranded. Um, mm-hmm. What one album, one book, and what one food are you going to want to have with you? Jeez, that's always tough. I always ask these questions, too. It's fun things to do. <laughs> and I think for the food, I would if I was to pick a dish of food, it'd probably be pasta. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just can't go wrong with pasta. Yeah. I mean, it, I've been eating it for 44 years. It hasn't changed yet. But so with I'm, pasta, yeah. you got to pick your, your Give me a noodle, noodle shape and, a sauce, and your yeah. sauce. Yeah. Uh, you know, like a red sauce, Italian style, you know. Yeah. And a a spaghetti? Or are we going with the lingerie? <laughs> you want the long noodles? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Macaroni, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, rigatoni. Rigatoni. Right. Go rigatoni. Yeah. rigatoni. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, Dende, Dende. Yeah. Did you hear that, Patrick? Valopi. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> in the book, I, I don't know that one one single book. I, I, I guess uh, I, I I would probably pick a magazine just because you can get sick of reading the same book. <laughs> like a it's, monthly magazine. Or yeah. <laughs> just like, a, can I get a subscription? Because See if I'm you probably can get it. No, you're gonna stay in that same month of the Mets win the playoffs or what? <laughs> yeah, you just like you know keep visualizing you in there. But yeah, yeah. I'd probably pick a, some type of men's health or magazine like that. You never really read everything, anyways, and it's sure. it's different pictures and lots of stuff going on. It's busy. Something so. survival oriented, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I might be own. able to get you a monthly subscription <laughs> delivered by Penguins or something. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Penguin, Penguin magazine. Delivery, or something. Yep. So, what about your one album? Give me some music. One album, then. jeez. Uh, you know, it, it, it's interesting. Is uh, you know, I, I like alternative music for the most part. I, I like a little bit of everything, but alternative music is always the kind of the core I like. Yeah, and, the you know, B-52s, Love Shack. Yeah, I don't know if I <laughs> no, like no, that no, song. No. I don't know if that kind of got me. Uh, you know, it's, I'm not sure. You hear like too that much song. of that at weddings. <laughs> yeah. That's like a standard wedding DJ song. I've already yeah. heard too much dance. of that. Yeah, like, right now. <laughs> but I probably like. I, I think maybe Back in Black, ACDC, or something like that. It's okay, just, I love that album. Classic. I think it's an awesome album. It, it's just amazing, and it was their first album with you know the new you know Bon Scott was no longer there and Brian Johnson yeah. came in, so it's kind of like a dynamic change for them as well. So it was a pretty critical album for them. So I. I, I'd probably pick that one. Yeah. There was just Fair an enough. ACDC um, cover band that played at Maxwell's Music House on Saturday night here locally. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Did I you did see not them? go. Oh. No, but a couple friends did. You, you just knew that was going on. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I think you've just, if people didn't know what your actual age was before we started recording, then yeah. you've yeah, just given the them a significant <laughs> hint by saying yeah. that album. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't say him, Pat Benatar, right? I could have said that. You could have. Yeah, yeah, I could have said true. that. Right? I think I him saying years. that he ate pasta for 44 years is a little bit of a hint, too. I but. guess there's that. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't listening closely enough to the pasta talk. Back yeah. What do you got? What's your next question, B? Yeah. Um, what, what question are we on here? Is this my last one? Uh, I have oh, one more. Oh, you have one this. more. So I must have one more after this too. Uh, my next question for you is: Can you give one piece of advice for new startups in five words or less? Stay focused. Keep busy. Okay. Yeah. Four Great. words. That works. Yeah. Yep. You get an extra word back. So next, <laughs> yeah. next podcast can do six words. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so as you grow, um, as you evolve, um, we're going to hire three people for you, Darren and I. We're going to pay awesome. for them. Steven's um, just going to pay. I, I have, don't have the money for in it. Our, in our wonderful world <laughs> of in. not reality. <laughs> yeah. Um, so who, who are you going to hire? Uh, you know, because we are, you know, essentially we're a marketing IT company. So uh, the marketing aspects uh, are important. I'd probably put another person there uh, on top of the persons that we already have. Uh, development, uh, front end and back end. So I'd probably throw two developers in. And it, it, if I had to sacrifice one for the other, it would be uh, the marketing person and put a QA person in there. So, mm. you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're I, I foresee us having a fairly large development shop. If things go the way they're looking to go, uh, then I would probably have a pretty big or a pretty decent sized development shop. Sure. Cool. Um, you told us earlier that you can do a lot of push ups. Yeah. So I'm going to ask a related question. Sure. Um, to follow up. What's your well, kind of just how many sit ups can you do? To the side, what uh, what do you like to do to stay fit yourself? I aside from push ups, I do a lot of cross training. So I'm, yeah. I'm not a big runner. I actually I don't particularly like running. Yeah, but I'll do a little bit of it just to you know have my 15 minutes of running. That's all I, I do really. 15 minutes of running. 
a uh, lot of core strength so a lot of cross training it's 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 simple it, it's full body it feels good i always feel great after my stress level seems to go down and uh things are clear again so cross training seems to work well for me uh, can i ask a follow-up awesome. to your follow-up yeah <laughs> uh, do you have a personal trainer uh no i don't uh i i, I did when i was uh younger uh, I, I i no longer do i used to do amateur sports and i had a personal trainer to help coach me and stuff like that cool uh, i was more of a kind of a, a coach more than a personal trainer but mm -hmm. uh, you know yeah. But yeah, so not not any longer. I have a pretty good, decent routine workout. I read enough stuff, and I, I have a lot of access to what's trending because of the field I'm in today. So Yeah, good. makes yeah. sense. Yeah, That's okay. awesome. Is that is that all 10 questions? That's I guess it. we still got to throw out the bonus question. So our bonus question, as always, <laughs> that we love to ask people is, toilet paper, fold, or scrunch? Oh, man, I would say... <laughs> Scrunch all the way. Really? Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> you don't see. You seem more disappointed than surprised. I don't hear many enthusiastic scrunchers. I hear reluctant scrunchers often. But you're like <laughs> big smile. Are you like labeling diving an entire, into that scrunch? Yeah, yeah. An entire um, demographic? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm just well, you know what? Actually, like I see if it's it, yeah. a wet wipe, then it's a fold, right? It's, okay. <laughs> there's no scrunching there. But <laughs> yeah, it's toilet <laughs> paper, though. Yeah. We Fair haven't really for... branched out into other mediums of like, <laughs> other, leaves other or wipe branches or utensils. Yeah. So. Twigs we, and sticks, we've folder, never, grunt. We've never thrown out like <laughs> yeah. the bidet really yeah. as an option, although it has come up in discussion, I guess. Yes, but, sure. uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Smiley face <laughs> okay. or surprised face? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All That's right. right. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we pretty much covered everything, so to speak. And then some. <laughs> Perfect. Excellent. Um, listen, before we wrap up, can you just let us know, uh, David, if we wanted to find you guys and kind of track your uh, development where can we find you guys online from this point forward? Sure. So www.fhmatch.com is our website URL. Yeah. Uh, we're on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We have a YouTube channel as well. We've done some funny videos and some good videos there. Yeah. Uh, what's the trainer's name? Stan or uh, yeah, Gary? Gary and, the trainer. Yeah, yeah. Gary the trainer. <laughs> those are really cool. I saw he those. got the heave ho on that one video. But yeah. cool. and we're gonna be putting out some more videos as well over the coming months. So yeah, we're we're pretty well uh, everywhere. But I'd awesome. say Twitter's a good source and same. With LinkedIn, there's a lot of information there about us. So. Awesome. awesome. Okay, so we'll throw out some links to those locations when we post the podcast so people can find you. That would be awesome. great. And, uh, yeah, so let's throw out some thank yous here. First of all, thank you very much, uh, David, for coming on on the podcast with us today. Yeah. Thank you both very much for having me. <laughs> yeah, I, I know it was a long drive for you. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yes. we really yeah. appreciate you making the effort. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we want to say thanks also to the KW Rotary Club for letting us record in this beautiful home, uh, getting us in the Christmas mood by being surrounded by these Christmas trees and decorations. Thank you, Elliot. Uh, yeah, it's been wonderful. Uh, and we want to thank you, our listeners, for joining us on another episode of TSP Weekly. Please feel free to send us your comments, questions, criticisms, feedback. Our email address is feedback at tspweekly.com. Or you can send us a message on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at tspweekly. So, from myself, Darren Conley, my co-host Stephen Campbell. That's me. And our guest, David Quenville from FH Match. Should I try the French pronunciation? Conville? Conville? That's pretty close. That's nice. yeah, something yeah, like that. Uh, <laughs> from all of us, thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you all next week. Mm -hmm.